This is the Gore Club Podcast with Steve Vessel, Derek Sturgeon, and Death Metal Dave. Yeah, skateboarding, rollerblading. Yeah. You know, hoverboards. Whatever hoverboards. you can fucking be. Yeah. There's some sort of mode of transportation other than walking. Yeah, That's fuck walking. That's what the eighties were all about. Fuck walking. Mm. <laughs> I guess we're rolling. I just, yeah. we are. are we ready to go? Okay, thank you. All right, all right. Uh, welcome to the Gore Club Podcast. Yay. I think it's a season Yay. two. We can, we I can guess, call it season uh, two. I guess we could do seasons. Fuck or it. Continuation of season one. What happens when we get to season nine and we fuck up the script? And I want to just say it. season two. You just suck and like act like we didn't get canceled after one season. Like yeah. everything I love. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, somebody from Game of Thrones actually is on our list. Really? Yeah. Tonight we are doing people who've died in 2020. Yeah, because it was such a fruitful year for... Entertainment? Death. And death. For death. Well, yeah, that's every year, though. I mean, every year the last, like, decade has been everyone's dying, so... Yeah, I guess we should probably introduce year. ourselves before we oh, talk about shit, death. Oh, shit, yeah, I'm Steve Vessel. You don't want to follow up death with, like, your name, you know? I'm, I'm Steve Vessel, I'm dead. I'm Death Metal Dave. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just dead. <laughs> that's what I was trying to lead in on. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> We're all going to be really rusty this is, uh, I can't wait. Super rusty. I've been gone for a few months, even before we left, but then they promised me I could... Come make fun of dead people, and I'm like, I'm in, guys. <laughs> We're going to lovingly talk about the yeah, people I'm not that we make fun of too much. Of love. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, what do we want to start with this? Actually, well, let's let's hi. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're live, you know? We yeah. took a break. Yeah, I'll see about, you guys later. It's been about two. Yeah, I left here in, like, the Halloween episode. I was like, hey, see you guys. And then I... It was too much. Here we are in January, and I am back. House 2 ruined it for him. House 2 ruined <laughs> it. Damn it, dude. Yeah. The 75th time of talking about Trick or Treat, I was like, fuck this, dude. I'm gone. Oh, my God. This is going to hit the road. Everything's been all right with me. I mean, I'm just hanging out, watching movies. I got that I got that Beastmaster oh, man, that 4K. Oh, it's so good. Why does Beastmaster need to be 4K? It doesn't. Whatever, it, man. But it has a bunch of cool stuff. It's, it's like cops. 4K porn. I don't want to see it, you know, all your... Yeah, you can see the razor burn. Just, yeah, you can see everything. Oh, yeah. fuck! Yeah, everything. Well, what if I'm into the, ra- the razor The razor burn. The razor burn. <laughs> what if I'm into razor burn? On, Are you then? I don't know. You don't know. I'm not telling you. There's probably a demographic for that. Yeah. There is. There, there definitely is. There's an audience for everything. There's toenail dem- demographics yeah. for porn. How many discs is that Beastmaster? It is, let's see. Who put it out? There's two Blu rays, Vinegar Syndrome. Oh, Blu-ray. nice. Okay. Uh, that's three it's discs. Giving County. Yeah, yeah you, you've looked at like the first disc and that's it. No, watch the. the you spent like $80 on that. Watch the Blu ray disc. No, well, Vinegar sale. Syndrome usually doesn't overprice their shit that much. What? Really? I didn't they think do. they did. They, they, they do. most <laughs> definitely do. Oh, man. They Rad was like 50 bucks. Worth Rad. it. Worth it. Yeah, they just they listen to Send Me an Angel. <laughs> Put that shit on loop, and then the college chick that you know pays for a daughter's college stars on it. What's her name? Lori. Uh, she didn't die. Oh, God, She's still man. alive. Full house chick. Oh yeah, yeah. Lori. She fucks the, John Stamos for a couple seasons. The one. Oh, the, the your one favorite. Prison. Yeah. Yeah. When it, yeah, you were wearing, wearing her t-shirt shirt last season. I was. I Jesse's used to, girl. I bought that shirt the week that shit happened. I was like, that's a mistake. Like it came in the mail like the day that news article <laughs> dropped about her being a piece yeah. of shit, and I'm like, ah, how can I wear this? Well, S- say it again, man. You're like that kid from the Twilight Zone episode. You just haven't figured out how, how to harness your powers yet. I know. It's just like, dude, I know I've said Trump a bunch of times. It hasn't fucking worked. Sorry. Yeah, that's like, actually how this listen. episode happened. Is because Derek constantly talks about somebody and something bad happens to him. Yeah, if you listen to like our first probably six episodes, uh, every time I mentioned a celeb on it, they died. At least one of them. And it's usually ones that have nothing to do with the episode. I just happen to be, like, ranting about some bullshit. <sighs> or John Saxon or whoever. And they're like, well, well, they fucking died. Good job, Derek. Yeah. Everybody blames me, but I don't think I did. I'm not, the, like, the Death Note kid. Oh, yeah, that's oh, it. Oh, that's oh, what you oh, are. <laughs> so your, your Death Note book is I got a podcast. Book. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't have a book. I just have a podcast. <clears throat> this is how I shun people. Deathcast. But I, I didn't spend the break doing shit. I watched a couple new horror movies. There's not a lot of great ones out. I watched one called Spree, which is made for teenagers, but I enjoyed. So whatever. Fuck y'all. It's about like an Uber driver that wants to go viral. Like he just what? yeah he's obsessed with going viral like on TikTok which is like what all the teenagers want to do so I guess some like dude my age is probably like let's write a horror script about how dumb this is so he decides he's gonna film himself murdering people to go viral so he's like on TikTok going live or whatever and while his friend who is like a influencer is trying to walk him through how to be an influencer during all this oh my god and it's all filmed from like the phone TikTok or whatever perspective yeah. <laughs> it was actually pretty fucking good it has the uh, 
It's like man. The kid from dumb. Stranger Things in it. Not the kid, like the older teen that has like the really good hair. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. In the pizza commercials. It's amazing shit. hair. Yeah. The good one, not the bad one. Yeah. They both have good hair. I think Rachel was telling about that. One. It, it, it's like personally. it's like not great, but it's like super intense though. It's just you know kind of like you're like what the fuck's gonna happen next because. It goes a few directions you're not expecting because you think it's going to be like a teen, cheesy fucking like, oh, who did it? And it goes fucking baddie. And then I watched... Uh, was it good? It was good. At, yeah, you should definitely watch it. Okay. It's fucking on Prime or one of those things at this point. There was one I watched that was really good and I can't remember the name of it. So that's There was not, one we talked about, Freaky. Freaky, that's it. Okay. Freaky was fucking I'm amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I was shocked by how good that was. For one, like, and now people are going to be mad at me, but fuck you, I don't care. Yeah, Every time I hear it, right people now. go like, well, that guy's a comedian, so he shouldn't be in this type of movie. That's bullshit, because most comedians fucking are depressed and love horror shit, <laughs> so they're into all this bullshit. Psychopaths. V- Vince Vaughn didn't start out, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, Vince Vaughn didn't start off as like the dude from fucking whatever yeah. date movies out, or whatever you're fucking, you no, know. No, Psycho. Soccer, soccer mom watching. Like psycho. And, and, yeah, yeah psycho. Yeah, all that shit. He did some weird shit, uh, Clay Pigeons. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. I forgot. He's a serial killer. Yeah, he's a yeah. serial killer in it. So he's good at playing like a creep, and Freaky's like doing the Freaky Friday gimmick where he is a serial killer, and he switches bodies with a teenage girl. And this Vaughn's fucking brilliant in it. And it is a horror comedy. It has a lot of like a big comedy element, but the gore in it's fucking crazy over the top. Exciting. Exactly. Yeah. Have you seen I thought you said you saw the dragon. No, no, no. I went to a movie premiere at, in Owensboro uh, for uh, 13 Slays of, uh, of, yeah. of Christmas, I think it's called, and they were premiering that movie as well next oh, to it. Oh, okay, yeah. So I did the college circuit. Yeah. That's what I meant, yeah. Yeah, just think Saved by the Bell meets a slasher, because that's essentially what it is. But when he, uh, he switches like, bodies with this teenage girl, so she's like stuck in this serial killer's body, and everyone knows what he looks like, so the cops are chasing her and all this shit, but he's... Vince Vaughn acting like a teenage girl. That's <laughs> that's a white Me- girl. But meanwhile, you have the teenage girl who's now like a psycho serial killer just roaming around this high school. So it's it's interesting. It's a good dynamic. It's funny as fuck. The gore's really good and over the top and like slightly gross. So yeah, you can't ask for. I was more. into it. Yeah, because those are, those are the only two. Spree and Freaky are the only two that I watch that I remember liking. I watch I watch so much shit. But I'm usually like the next day, it's out of my head. Yeah, I found that happened a lot. Like I'll just watch it. It's like, oh, cool, this is new on Shutter. I watched one the other day. Was it Pale Door? Yeah. It's like it's like a Western horror film. Oh, I want to see that. Yeah. I love Western horror films. Yeah. There, there's not really good ones. Yeah. But that's they okay. Have, we love that. They piece had of doors shit. in the Wild West. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they do. Two of them. They went like this. Oh, yeah. 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 Learn something well, new. Well, shorties. Day. They were short. I didn't think. I, I don't really watch. You know, it's fucked up. I don't watch new things. I did not watch. I, much. You didn't watch much? At all. No. Did you, did you I, watch Santa Slay on read, Christmas? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you watch Santa Slay? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. No, I, I went back. That's what I meant. Like, I didn't it's watch anything new. I literally stacked up all my Blu-rays, DVDs, and VHS, all my holiday ones, all the Christmas ones, and, and just went through them. Uh, P2, all the ones that I haven't even thought of in a long time. How did P2 make the first movie that just came out of your mouth? Because like I was trying to find ones that most people don't <laughs> even think P2. about. P two. P two is a hard. I remember movie. liking that though. Yeah, it's great. Is that the uh, stuck in like the garage gimmick yep. thing? Yeah, that's pretty good. It had that chick. What's her name? Exactly. I can't say. I her can't name. remember. She's in Star Trek. She's in fucking Amityville it, Horror remake. Oh, uh, that I thought she was the Glass House girl. No, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, Dave, look it up. That's uh that's Sobieski. You're talking about. Yeah, that's what I said. I can't say. And her name. I love the Glass House. It's such a weird names. movie. But no, I decided to just pick movies I had. I, we don't talk about it. Either. We, we yeah. ourselves don't talk about it. Or people don't like. Oh, it's a holiday movie. You know, I'm weird. That's Dude. Santa Slay, motherfucker. Rachel yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Rachel. Santa Slay is like the best opening scene of like any horror movie ever. And it's nobody like they, talks about. They blew their budget on that scene. Whatever. It's amazing. Well, maybe they didn't. They Chris, probably blew it on the reindeer. Yeah. Chris Kattan didn't cost that much. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have Fran Drescher at that time. Probably was pretty cheap. No. She's still looking good at that point. That's about eight years after the nanny. <laughs> she's still, you know, might be holding up after a while. Yeah, that's hasn't good. abused herself. Uh, Rebecca Gayhart, she's in the opening scene. Too. I wonder if they even told anybody, like, just like you're going to be working with these people. They all just showed up, like, hey, and they just didn't have their scripts. And there's like, sit down, and then fucking Bill Goldberg kicks the door in, starts yeah. killing people. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. And they're probably like, you know, who? What's ten stars that we could get for the cheapest possible amount? For ten dollars a piece. And they're like, oh, they're for twenty <laughs> bucks. He just got kicked off Saturday Night Live. Oh and... god, yeah, it worked though. I like that movie. Oh, I think surprised, just... surprised like Carrot Top wasn't in it or something. He was. He could get. He's too movie. buff. He couldn't take it seriously. Yeah, who's serious? Beat up Remember that motherfucker? 
Who's serious? Yeah, who's serious? Young Einstein. That was peak steroids carrot top of that year. So oh, you know, like, yeah, he looked you, weird. You like, cast him. He's got him. foam stuck in it. He he's too so big. Weird. It would make Goldberg look bad. You couldn't cast him. No. His shoulders are ridiculous. Well, his bicep looks fake. I think looks like water balloons. Fake. How's he not dead? I don't know. He's just injecting himself with weird shit jello. Fucking buff Rocky Dennis. But no, I really didn't see a whole lot of new stuff. I went to the movie premiere for 13 Slays of Christmas. Or Xmas, I guess is what it's called. And uh, that was really cool. They did the social distance. Got to meet the director. That kind of thing. But uh, I, I, I revisited as many films as I... Could. I, I watched Black Christmas like four times. Your favorite. Yeah, I hate that movie, I'm but I get it. it. Like we all have like our comfort food. You know, I watch more Twilight Zone than anything. I was talking about that before the show. Oh uh, yeah. I watched a fuck ton of Twilight Zone last because New Year's they always play the marathon anyway. The old one, oh. the oldest one. I like. I can't find the '80s one. I would like to watch that again because uh, that used to come on syndication a lot when I was a kid. But I don't think I've seen it since I was a kid. I haven't either. I would get the, the my favorite stories from Amazing Stories yeah. mixed up with the Twilight Zone episodes, and they're like, "No, that's a that's an Amazing Story, Steve." I'm like, "Fuck." And then we watched the we watched the Twilight Zone movie, and then you know, <laughs> and it's really weird watching it because like Vic Morrow, and you know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Speaking of dead people, and yeah. that's like the most unfortunate. It's it's weird when you watch it because that like Vietnam scene or whatever. You can tell how bad it is, like it's because he's there for like two seconds. Like, oh, he yeah. shows up, he's oh, yeah. hiding. They get shot at, at him, jumps and in then the you water. see the stunt man jump. Yeah, it's like someone in a Vic Morrow wig <laughs> jumping. It's really bad. Dick Warlock. Yeah, and can you imagine that being like your legacy though? Like you got you have this long career, it and the last thing you ever film is just when you're saying every racial slur imaginable. Like that's crazy. He got I redemption. Mean, he had yeah, he, not real redemption. He's no. in a cage at the end, right? They drive away with him in the yeah. Cup. He doesn't get redemption. He get they, the, it's they, like we get revenge on Pop. Yeah, we get him. revenge. He never changes in it. It's not like a oh, Christmas yeah. movie. It's not like hey guys, I'm not racist now. Well, since he died, they it's had just, to edit it to where it, it ended, where he gets put in the the, uh, the truck, the, the, you know, the train to go to Auschwitz. The train. That's what it is. Yeah, the train's taken off. And uh, that's his. Uh, well, here's, that's his comeuppance. But I mean, there, he was supposed to. Like probably said, change. We, yeah, he was. But how would like you even redeem the kids? How would you show that he's redeemed? Though? I don't know. Like when he gets back, is he going to like? John Landis. Because him, because uh, <laughs> don't. Yes, yeah, him and the black guy at the bar. That's the whole confrontation, right? Yeah. Because you know they're logical. Like, hey, can you just quit saying that? They're actually being really cool about it, by the way. Because he says like he drops like ten in bombs. Yeah. And then well, uh, every he says every. And then slur. then it goes and says every slur, yeah. and then goes back to the in bombs, and they're just finally like, hey, can you just maybe leave? Yeah. So what was he going to do when he comes back? He goes, hey, guys, I'm not going to say that anymore. Nope. Like, how were they going I'm going to say Honky Cracker and Peckerwood. And yeah. then, like, fake Rod Serling's <laughs> voice is going to come on. And like, you learn about racism in the Twilight Zone. <sighs> That's weird. But, yeah, speaking of uh, dead celebs. Let's start our list. Let's just let's start. 2020 uh, had a lot of them. If you remember going back to 2016, everybody said that was going to be, like, the worst year. 2015, 2016, they're like, the year's killing the celebs. It's because we're old. Yeah. We're getting fucking old, and everybody we love is dying. All of right your man. All of them. Everybody you like, you know, if you grew up in the 80s, early 90s, they're all 60, 70, and they're like a hard 70. So yeah, they like, lived. That's fucking, they did some Motley Crue shit. Some of them did some Motley Crue shit, which somehow all those guys are still fucking <laughs> right. I mean, Nick Mars is like a statue on stage, but he's still there. Nicky Six is just heroin through a water hose. Uh, <laughs> if I die, I'm blaming you. Oh my God. <laughs> Corey is our new our new uh, producer editor. He's over there uh, yelling at, don't curse Motley Crue. Don't curse Motley Crue. That's great. They've had enough bad time. I love it. I love it. Thank oh, you, Corey. They're doing okay. I feel like Tommy Lee's going to go first anyway. Dun, 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 fucking drum dun, dun, kit's dun. just going to release him one day when he's upside down. Be <laughs> old enough to where he just drunk. fucking crumbles. Yeah, well, so where do you guys want to... Who was who one of your beloved people you, that dropped the You want to start this, Dave, or how do you want to do this? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess I can go with, with the one that, that, that affected me the most. Ian Holm. In a fucking home. Yeah, I've got the whiteboard of doom, but we don't have to go in order. Yeah, I would, I would prefer just to start with like who def- who you really give a fuck about. Yeah, in home. Yeah, in a fucking, fucking home. Bill Blow Baggins. I knew you were going to fucking say that. Man. I don't even hey, know what any of this know. means. This is great. <laughs> Derek loves Lord of the Rings more than you do. Well, I mean, most people think probably of Alien. Ash. Fifth Element. Uh, fucking, he's, he's Jack the Ripper from <laughs> Hell. He's amazing. In that oh, film. that guy. Yes. That's cool. I never oh, knew like, he had a real name. Oh, like, I was spurring your memory. I didn't know he had a real name. <laughs> <laughs> he's in Brazil. Uh, what else do I have up there? I mean, oh, Naked Brazil's Lunch. Right. I love Cronenberg films. He's done a lot of fucking things. He's, he's also uh, classically trained. Um, he worked with Lawrence Olivier. He, he did that kind of caliper of stage, and then he, when he made movies, he's like, I'm going to be an, an android, an alien. Oh, <laughs> shit. Surprise, spoiler, if you haven't seen that fucking movie, he's yeah. the bad guy. So but, how did he drop? 
He's fucking old. He was 88. You don't just die from being old. I mean, that's part of it, but what, what did he, what happened? I don't, I, don't. I think, you like, want me to go through everybody, like, how exactly I do want to, some of them, like, this oh, guy Jesus that you really Christ. love, I wish you had to read off how he died. Oh. When did he die? Like, what was the date, time, and, and, and yeah, procedure? Uh, June 19. I want to hear the sadness in your voice as you read that he got attacked by bees like Macaulay Culkin. Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, he's also in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. What else? Time Bandits. We're going to talk about Time Bandits a few times tonight because not everybody that we're going to talk about is exclusively in the horror genre. Yeah, and a lot of these cross over. Like, they've worked together. Or Wait, a lot of people from Time Bandits died? Yes. <laughs> what the like fuck? Like three. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, man. That's one of my favorite films. So, Terry, you know, uh, we'll get to that. Um, That's weird. But Ian Hill, he's like, looking up for the cause of death. It's not on his Wikipedia. Isn't just like, hey, this um, how this motherfucker died. I mean, he was eighty-eight. I don't think they really do a, like an autopsy. No, you know, to try to figure out why like, you well, died when you're dude, eighty-eight. I spent a lot of time on Wikipedia looking up dead people, and it's all they always have like, well, you know, he suffered from the worst cancer ever, and it ate his body alive for ten years. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why are you telling me this? <laughs> but then I, I can't remember who. Oh. Uh, on Oz, the dude that, uh, if you watch like the first season of Oz, there's a cannibal on there. <coughs> Long-haired guy, looks like he's fresh out of a metal band. He like ate his parents and all this shit. And I looked him up because I was like, man, nobody from this show's dead. And he's the only one that was dead at the time. We'll get to that later. <laughs> and uh, he got like some like horrible form of cancer like in his 40s that like literally just ate away at his whole body. And I was like, I don't wonder, I'm mad that I read that. Oh God, I'm 45. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting on my couch like having drinks, you know, having like I'm watching all this. I'm like, oh, I wonder what he's doing now. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Fuck, Fuck, man. Well, he so, died of Parkinson's disease. See, I knew it was something. Oh, God damn. Damn, that's... Knew he was something he is besides being 88. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Someone else who died of Alzheimer's was uh, Terry Jones. Who the fuck is Terry Jones? Terry Jones? Terry Jones. Terry Jones. Terry, Terry Jones. Jones was an original... TJ. Yeah. He was an original uh, Monty Python. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. He's, he directed... The Holy Grail and Terry Gilliam actually was the co-director. A lot of people like to switch that around somehow, but they don't give him credit. He is the main director. Terry, G Terry Gilliam was learning how to do all of this because he was main. Terry Gilliam started as the Monty Python animator, um, and it was a DIY, DIY film. So it, it's fucking one of the most graphic fucking fantasy movies of, of my childhood. Is Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Yeah, for and sure. It's so fucked. We watched that in great. school too, which is weird. Looking like back music on it. class. <laughs> that was the first time I almost pissed myself laughing. Was watching that movie. Uh, what? <laughs> Holy Hopefully girl, you man. weren't in class too. No, no, I was, okay. at, I was at home on my couch. Hi. That's even better. He That's wrote. Smart. Terry Jones actually wrote the original script for Labyrinth. Um, nice. Yeah, man. He died of uh, of a slow of a very slow onset thing of Parkinson's. Not of Parkinson's. Of uh, Alzheimer's, I think. Oh, yeah, let's see. The, this past year has a lot of people that passed away that I know, like character actors and shit like that, but I never knew their names. There were so many people that would like pop up on my Facebook this past year, like, rest in peace to this guy, because everybody's like their biggest fan as soon as they die. That's oh, just absolutely. Like, you know, oh, yeah, I'm not going to do that at all. But yeah, yeah, I see that all the time. Like, oh, my God, I was such a big fan of Tommy Lister. And I'm like, motherfucker, like, really, you like Friday. That's cool. Fifth like, Element. Fifth Element, yeah. No, and I'm gonna, I'll actually go to him a little no, bit later. No, fucking Zeus, baby. Because that was sad, but not Love because him. of those yeah. you know, biggest fan bullshit. And we can yeah. do this, too. We can jump around different dead people. Like, Ter you know, I mean, but Terry Jones, that, that, one, that one actually hurt me because, I mean, he yeah. was going to do a heavy metal version of Nutcracker with the guy that wrote all of Meatloaf's music. What's his name? Like, was going to do it? Steinman? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he would no. Yeah, he would. He was in the process of, of making the like, heavy metal like version of the Nutcracker. So they were like currently in the process of doing that. Yeah, I think before he started coming that's, downhill. That's kind of awesome. Dude. It would have been fucking amazing, because <laughs> with with his imagination. Oh my god, yeah. Do you think they have a full script for that already? If it if it is, it's gotta be online, man. Dave, look it up. No, <laughs> no, no don't look that up. We don't. Let's make deep dive into that. What well, fucking fan you brought up Zeus. Work. Zeus, yeah. See, I'll actually go into my like kind of uh, pro wrestling rant here for a second too. And I know this is like horror and all this shit. It's all connected. But uh, okay. pro wrestling took some really bad hits this year. Now, starting with, I know Zeus isn't really known to be a pro wrestler. He's, you know, of course, no holds bar of Hulk Hogan was the thing, right? But back in the '80s, Vince McMahon would do whatever the fuck he wants, as as he does now, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and like, you know what? Let's just rip this guy out of the movie and have him wrestle fucking Hogan at a couple of shows. Like he wants revenge. For losing in a movie, which is fucking ridiculous. Oh, I was in. 
And he, yeah, I, remember that I was into. I bought into it too, and they gave him like sexy ass gold outfit. It was amazing. Yeah, I mean, he may have <laughs> those, had those gauntlets, yeah. <laughs> looking like fucking Superman four out of there. I was loving that shit for WWE <laughs> or WWF at the time. He may have had like six appearances. I mean, the dude didn't know how to wrestle, but you you didn't have to. Just like when Mister T came for like the two manias. Yeah, I mean, just go do a couple moves. People are gonna pop for it. Hulk Hogan was so over, it didn't fucking matter what you did. Just be a bad guy, and they're going to cheer. Or they're going to boo you, and they're going to cheer him. You're going to be the worst person in the world. They're going to love Hogan, yeah. no matter what. Eat your vitamins, say your prayers, all that bullshit. <laughs> so, Zeus was a big part of that. And then, of course, like, for me, for my stoner years, there was Friday. Like, when I was getting high with friends in, like, 8th, ninth grade, hoping mom's not listening to this. Sorry. She's not. She's definitely not fucking listening to this. But like everybody, everybody watched like Friday and Half Baked were like the big ones. If you weren't watching like the old Cheech and Chong movies, Friday and Half Baked, and then from there he just appears in so much random shit from there. And he was around forever. Universal Soldier. Yeah, that dude pops up in like I've watched like so many horror movies the last like decade (laughs) where he's just like a gas station clerk, like angry guy at gas station, or angry dude in a security guard or police officer. I do have to point out it says that he he wrestled Abdullah the Butcher. Where was that at? It says the World Wrestling Council in Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah. Well, they probably saw him. That's not legally sanctioned. God, I want to see yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, so World Wrestling Council. I can go into all kinds of weird shit that that's happened there, but we'll save that for another day when we finally give me my pro wrestling hey, episode. But, uh, <laughs> we can do that. He was but, in a lot of stuff, man. WrestleManiac. Uh, yeah, he was in a ton of shit. He was around for a v- very long time. Like, as far as, like, I mean, you're looking at, like, early 80s up until the day he died. He yeah, was doing I, shit. I even forgot he and was in And probably, that. like, five or six movies a year. He was in that Mario Van Peoples movie, uh, Posse, that Western Yeah, he's a Posse. Yeah. Hey, that's, like, yeah. actually pretty well done. He's in a lot of shit. He never has a lot of lines. He's always just that big, angry-looking fucking dude. Uh, that, um, he was the president of the universe in the fifth element, okay? That's true as well. President and, Garden Wishmaster, too. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, he just appears in, like, all kinds of random shit. Yeah, and he gets his ass beat eventually. He's, the like, the bully, because that's what he was in the 90s. It's always like, man, you're big, and you're kind of ugly, so you got to be, like, the ultimate fucking bad guy. Yeah. But, man, like, he was, like, one of the first ones from pro wrestling that took a hit this year. Uh, we also lost Shad Gaspard. Uh, from people in Louisville, if you ever went to OVW Wrestling about 15 years ago, uh, he was an OV. He came from OVW, so that's where he trained at, made it kind of big, I guess. Got signed on the WWE. Uh, he had a gimmick called Crime Time, uh, him and his partner, JTG. They were a great tag team, unfortunately, in the business. Sometimes you just don't get used and get released. Uh, so they haven't been on TV about six or seven years. Uh, but he was on vacation with his family, and uh, a current came, I guess, and, like, Started, you know, pulled people under, and his son was with him. So, Holy fuck. so these like lifeguards or what a coastal guard, whoever comes out to fucking save you. I'm sorry, Coast I'm butchering this. That's off. Uh, you yeah, know, they, they, they come to get him, but he said no, get he pointed at his kid instead. He said, Take him. And by the time they could come back, they already, they already sucked him under and killed him. So, that was like, that was a pretty that's, that's what I consider a tragedy because dude was probably man. like. 40-something years old. Everybody ever talks about him says he's one of like the nicest guys in the business, uh, which there's another guy I'll mention as far as that goes as well. And also, like, I watched this dude like when he came up. Like, it sucks. You watch someone come from nothing, make it on TV, and then you hear a story like that. It fucking sucks. A uh, little bit after that, Tracy Smothers. Once again, if you're local, you watch wrestling, Tracy's everywhere. Uh, it's not the most well-liked guy from a fan standpoint because he's a... Uh, the, the Southern boy, so he came out in his gimmick, uh, which, you know, Confederate flags, talks all his shit. It's a wrestling gimmick. It happens. Uh, he'd get over the hard way sometimes. He'd talk shit to the whole crowd. But you'll never meet a nicer guy backstage. I mean, he stayed, this guy was almost 60, maybe a little younger than that. Can't fucking remember. But at every single independent wrestling show he got booked on, this was a guy that worked WWE, ECW. He worked everywhere he could ever fucking think of. But now he's working indies in Jeffersonville, Indiana, in arenas where you watch my show at. It's where you can oh, find wow, him at yeah. a lot. But any show he was booked on, he would sit back and watch the whole show. He wasn't one of these assholes that came in, did his job, and left. Yeah. He sat there and watched every moment, every show, talked to all the boys in the back, treated everybody like they were family, give you advice if you wanted advice. He would talk shit to you if you didn't even talk shit to you. God damn it. He was a great guy. When, I, when my friend's dad died, uh, you know, about a year and a half ago, uh, we went to a show. He walked right up to me and gave him a, a t- Tracy Smothers T-shirt and gave him a big hug. Said, I heard about your dad. I'm so sorry. He's just one of the coolest dudes. Uh, he died from his battle of cancer. And uh, last one, I'm skipping a lot of people, so if you're a wrestling fan, you get mad at me because there's like 15 fucking wrestling people that died this year, and it's unfortunate, but it's part of the business. 
people, a lot of people do bad things. I'm trying to focus on the ones that die, <laughs> no, you know, not from being fucking roided out or finding all the cocaine in the world or hanging with Nikki Six and not surviving the party. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, Brody Lee got taken from us the day after Christmas, and that was probably one of the fucking worst things you can imagine. He's 41 years old. Uh, there's still not a lot of information on what happened. He says a non-COVID lung, lung disease. Issue, yeah. uh, he was r running on his uh, Peloton or Peloton, whatever, yeah. and he couldn't finish a workout one day and realized something was wrong. Went to the doctor, was instantly hospitalized. Apparently, he was hospitalized for about the last month or so. We just didn't know it. Everybody thought he had like an ankle injury, and he's dead, like just gone. So everybody's been running tribute shows the last week for him. This is a guy that made it um, from the Indies to WWE. Uh, was as Luke Harper in WWE for about eight years. For your horror fans, he did a gimmick called Wyatt Family, which was like Backwoods Texas Chainsaw Massacre family. He'd wear his crazy fucking goat mask and just this dirty wife beater. And this dude looks fucking scary. He's Pushing seven foot tall, long beard. Oh my god! You know this that dude that stands with his arms crossed at like a fucking metal show that you don't want to bump into when you're moshing. He looked like that guy. Uh, so it's just it's just been a rough year for pro wrestling. Uh, and then they they did the tribute show on AEW last week. Brought his son out. And it was pretty cool. You know his little boy got to go in the ring and they like retired the belt that he held. And it was just it's one of those things that like still fucks me up because it's like 41 years old. He hit this high point of his career literally a month before this. He had oh. the best match of his fucking career on TV, and then, boom, you're gone. So that really fucked me up, man. And wrestling sucks. I hate being a fan of it because, like, we got a tragedy, like, every year. <clears throat> it's a lot like being a horror fan because now all of our idols are getting old as fuck. Um, just like we talked about Stuart Gordon. I mean, we did a whole yeah, show. Yeah, he's on our list. We've already did an entire episode for uh, Stuart you know, we did a whole episode of Stuart Gordon, but if you're a horror fan, like, that's what you were around. Uh, if you're a pro wrestling fan, like, recently you watched Brody Lee or Luke Harper every fucking week the last five, six years at least. If you're an independent wrestling fan the last 12 years, and that's got just taken from you overnight with no real rhyme or reason, just lung failure at 41. Jesus. What the fuck? So now, let's go back to happier dead people. God damn it. <laughs> well, Corey we, Feldman. No, fuck. Oh, no. I mean, we've got a lot He's of on the wish list. They have so many people who've passed away this year, we can't talk about all of them. We just don't have time. Okay, so you. we're going to touch on, on a lot of the ones that we remember. That real uh, quick Oscars rundown where you just show the face real quick. Right, Boom. no shit. Okay, well, Kurt Thomas from Jim Cotta. The star of Jim Cotta is dead. He died this year. Don't know what that is. You don't know what Jim Cotta is? <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Brian Dennehy... Uh, I thought he was a Rambo. Rambo. <laughs> Rambo. He's the guy that tried to kill Rambo. He was in a movie called FX. I think. He, I think he was also in yeah. a sequel. I love FX. FX nice. is a film that's uh, basically it's a special effects artist who gets framed for murder and he's running and he uses special effects to you know, like James Bond, but to he get knows away. how to make a squib. Yeah, oh, it's fucking great. So is it like yeah. fade to black? Way, way different. Way it's, different. It's more okay. of an action cool. movie. Okay. Not, Not as cool. cool. Okay, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> but, to black. You know, I uh, say, say Stan Kirsch from Highlander. Stan Kirsch was another one that. Fuck, he killed himself. That sucks. Yeah, that, that's fucked up. So January was like fucked for me because like I'm a diehard Highlander fan and Richie, if you're young, if you're old, Richie sucks. Richie's going to annoy the shit out of you. Yeah, you go, when I go back and watch it, he's annoying. When you're 10 he's to, the cloud to kick, when man, you're 10 to 13, lover. when I was watching, he's just Robin, you know? I was like, oh, that's the coolest guy in the world. He's got a motorcycle, he's got a cool jacket. Yeah, he's the character uh, that draws the young crowd in. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to sleep with like every other girl and it never works out for him, but you still think he's cool, you know? That's why you like him. Yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, he's a piece <laughs> of shit. But no, it really bummed me out because he, he killed himself uh, like the first week of the year, pretty much. <clears throat> And it's just one of those weird things, like when you see somebody play like an immortal on TV for all those years, and it's like, oh, they, they just fucking killed himself. And he's he was like a motivational speaker, like Fuck. the last couple. Because I always looked him up to see if he would do conventions. Because like I got you know I got my Duncan McCloud signed sword. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if I can get fucking Richie? Well, unfortunately, he never killed himself. Yeah. Don't know why. I mean, depression's a bitch. We've all been there before. Yeah. Uh, it fucking sucks though, man. Because that that's just one of those characters that are like forever gonna live in my head. And he, I just started rewatching that show with my son. So I, I haven't even told him yet. I was oh, like, I'm not no. gonna mention it. Maybe when Richie dies on a show, and I'm like, and guess what? <laughs> he's like, he's not alive. He's dead in real life, too. Well, Maybe I'll just be like, that's how he dies in real life. That's just that, not yeah, the song. hero's death, yeah. Just sweep it under the rug. And then if you want to talk about Highlander, Sean Connery. Sean, Sean Connery. fucking Connery. Zardoz. Zardoz. Come on now. Mankini. That's all you gotta know. Yeah. Well, The Rock. Out. 
The Rock. Well, he was in the, the Fantastic League of Extraordinary Men. That, that was the movie that fucking Gentlemen. made him retire. That <laughs> I hate movie. That. That's bad. With that movie, could have been good. He he, he, Great he ruined him. So he was like, I'm never doing this again. And they, he was supposed to be Gandalf. Was he? He was supposed to be Gandalf. God, I'm glad that didn't happen. Yeah, shot the shot the Connery. Let me look at my notes. Got yeah, he was definitely he he was he was supposed to be Gandalf. He was he was in the running for it. I know he, that. Was he cast and he turned it down, or what happened there? God. No, he was just retired. By this time, he'd already retired, and they keep trying to bring him back. And he's like, "Look, man, <laughs> didn't he do something recently? I'm fucking retired." No, he was actually supposed to be the architect in the Matrix as well, and he was like, "No, really? Yes, that would suck." <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. It, it'd been interesting because it, really? that guy talks so fucking fast and precise. Yeah. With, that, with his accent, it probably would have been it like, could be, what? It could be interesting, I guess. Yeah. I just, there's, I think once something happens, it's hard to imagine it cast differently. You know what I mean? Like, I like The Matrix, so I can't yeah. picture him being switched in and put in as any character in it. Yeah. <laughs> Morpheus. Yeah, Morpheus. Oh, <laughs> Which know. pill do you want? <laughs> uh, he, he did a movie I love, uh... Um, called uh, Murder on the Orient Express, and he did the original version of the movie with an all-star cast. Anthony Perkins is in there too, and he—that's I love that movie. And, uh, and if you've seen the remake, it's good, it's fun, but the original is gold. It's fucking amazing. Uh, he's in Time Bandits. We just talked about that a second ago. Oh, he was in Time Bandits. Yeah, he, yeah, he's Agamemnon. The joke in the script was the guy pulls off you know, the, the 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 gladiator or whatever. The guy who kills the Minotaur pulls off his helmet, and it's Sean Connery. That's what it's like. It's a joke in the script. Oh, and they're right. like, well, he'll never be in the movie. Let's just send him the fucking script. And he was like, I'll totally do this. <laughs> Wasn't he like 90, 91? He's probably up. Uh, oh, yeah, he was up there. Yeah, he was, he somebody, was 90. He was somebody 90. cut his head off? Uh, somebody finally got his ass? Yet, yet to be determined. <laughs> ah. He's also in Marty, which is an Alfred Hitchcock <laughs> film, with Tippi Hedren, which was one of my favorite uh, Hitchcock blondes. You know, he's the one that, when he died, I realized how many Sean Connery movies I haven't watched. I don't think I've watched, like, I've watched the Bond movies, mm -hmm. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, fortunately. Sorry, yeah. fucking, I liked the book, and then that happened. I didn't do it. Have you seen uh, uh, Land? What? Outland? Nope. Science fiction? Highlander. I've seen Highlander. Yeah, and Highlander too. I've seen, because uh, I used to have a boner for Catherine Zeta-Jones. I saw that one movie. Entrapment. 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 That's a good movie. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I, don't know. I don't know if at 14-year-old me might have a different opinion. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know why you watch <laughs> really it. Really, I like it for different That laser wire he's, scene. Uh, he's in mm -hmm. First Night with Ben Cross, who also passed away this year. And Ben Cross did the... Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, Ben Cross was the, the Dark know. Shadows remake yeah. as Barnum, Barnum's Collins. Um, in that movie, he plays uh, um, what? Oh God! Why do people hate the Dark Shadows remake so much? The no, so. wait, 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 that's the remake that Tim Burton made. The original no, remake that came out in the early '90s, I think. See, that's why he threw me off because I didn't think. Yeah, no, 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 no. He, he played that was that was Johnny Depp. No, he played. They he did a really good re, like revamping of the entire series, and it only lasted one season, but it's fucking great. Just like Johnny Depp's in a Tim Burton movie. Holy I shit. mean, in case you didn't know, he does that sometimes. They're friends. What's he going to do when Tim Burton dies? <laughs> no comment. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Tim Burton's trying to bring him back just to give him, like, you know, I'm sorry that you dated that person or were married to that person. It's like, eh. I'm not getting involved in that shit. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a whole other conversation. That's that, like, that's, you know, that's couples fight shit. You right. guys, at this point, you got too much dirt on both of you. Peace. Bye. Remember, he's getting online. Tim Burton's like, taking sides. I love Facebook. Remember, he's on Facebook, Facebook like, taking sides on this. I'm like, I think they both need to shit out of each other, guys. I think this is just a toxic, sad thing. It is. We gotta stay the fuck out of it. But going back to Connery, he did. I don't know. One of them be 2021. <laughs> 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 Fucking. Tim, Tim Burton's looking rough. Tim Burton's looking a little rough. He's looking like McMars. Uh, uh, Tim, uh, Sean Connery did a uh, basically a Sherlock Holmes meets the Inquisition movie called Name of the Rose. And it was, was Christian Slater as like his Watson. It's fucking graphic. It's Slater. fucking dark. It's amazing. I've seen more Christian Slater movies than I've seen Sean Connery it's, movies. Right. It's got um, <laughs> fucking it has Hellboy in it. Which all of a sudden, first I can't night, think of, pump up the volume. Yeah. Which one? Oh my god, who played Hellboy? Why can't I think of him? Oh, oh, thank it. He's in it as a hunchback with a gnarly face. It's like really graphic. He always dark. had a gnarly face. Uh, F. Murray oh, Abraham Marvel. is the guy that played who killed fucking Amadeus. You know, he's in it. Uh, it's it's really brutal film, and it's basically a uh, whodunit with Sean Connery playing the Sherlock Holmes almost character, but he's a monk. It's fucking bizarre. He's a monk. Yeah, they're monk. Him and Christian Slater is like a little monk in training, <laughs> and they go to a monastery to figure out. Why did you make Christian Slater two foot tall? Because he's a little, he's a little monk. Because he's, he's like a little he's a wee guy. He's like he just came out is of like it, is this legend, legend of Billy Jean. Legend of Billy Jean. Yeah, Christian he, Slater. Yeah, he just came yeah. out of that. So yeah, Sean Connery, man. They still have the accent from Legend of Billy Jean. Get on Billy Jean. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know why the hell he has the accent. It's like Southern it's, California. It's you know? so bad. You trying to fuck my sister? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wilfred Brimley. Yeah. Let's just jump to people. <laughs> Wilfred Brimley. Wilfred Brimley. Diabetes. I mean, people. Uh, we just know him as like Cocoon and the Thing. 
Yeah, you can connect that's him to Brian Denny because Brian Denny things. was in Cocoon. Yeah, he is. Holy shit, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Diabetes, that's mainly what people know him from now. Yeah. He's that fucking family guy, cat or dog. Or I met whatever. him, I met him, uh, like, it was a few, years ago, a few years ago at Around, and I may have told the story, but I got an autograph from him, and I was just like, it, was, it wasn't even a, a thing autograph. It was like just him in a cowboy hat. I was like, it looks like it's from Cocoon. I'll take that. Yeah. Oh. And he just signs it, Blair, Wilford Brimley. Because he knows what you're doing. No, it's just... It just it's it, like, hey, man, I love well, Cocoon. He's, he's fucking... Well, at that point, he was like 80 doing conventions. And yeah. I never saw him in a convention scene before. So he's just like sitting behind his table, his arms crossed, just staring. Probably thinking like, look at all these fucking weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm up there like, what's Jessica Tandy like? Yeah. <laughs> well, my, my, my favorite thing that happened at that convention was people kept bringing him that uh, diabetes dog or cat or whatever from Family Guy. So on Friday, they were oh, they were no. paying for his autograph, and he was signing them. And then Saturday morning, I guess, like, one of the first people that came in line brought it to him, and he signed it, and he looked at his handle, and he goes, why do people keep having me sign this cat? <laughs> and, like... The handler explained the joke to him, and he got fucking mad. Oh no! Because he had no idea that it was like a like a thing. Yeah. Well, now he knows. He, he didn't. He didn't know what memes were. He probably has no fucking idea. Which that's a better place to be, honestly. Yeah, I don't. You don't need to know what people are doing with you in this year. God, if I didn't have the internet, I'd be so much happier. <laughs> <laughs> we, I think we all would. But let's go. Like we Max, Max von Sydow. Max, Max, motherfucking Van Cito. Cito, Cito. Yes, the Gosh. Exorcist, uh, Flash Gordon, Dune. Yeah, I love him in Dune. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was. Uh, he's in, he, he started God, with Ingmar him. Bergman films. He's like everyone knows him from like the Seven Seal. He's in fucking Judge Dredd. God damn it. The, like the Stallone <laughs> yeah he yeah, is he's, he's the main uh, he, uh, you're naming a lot of movies I don't like oh I love it this is you, great you love Stallone's <laughs> Judge Dredd okay I like it for what it's supposed to be because I, I can read through the it's lines to be. he's a big Rob Schneider fan no I, it's, it's just ridiculous it's just over the top bullshit and I love it it's so bad it's so bad I like Carl Urban Dredd though that fucks but see like if, if Stallone just kept the goddamn helmet on it would be halfway decent yeah, well, because they yeah. they put the the cannibal bro, the family in there. That's in the book. They've got the comedy aspect, which is actually in the comics. All the little things that are needed to be. He looks like he needs to look. I mean, Carl Urban is awesome, but it's like more of a fucking motorcycle outfit. You know, there's like little well, things. Got to modernize just, it. They could just put it together. It's like when before, uh, what's his face did the Pun Punisher show. All the Punisher movies put together would be a good Punisher movie. Well, if you, you combine, I mean? like, yeah, like the grittiness of the Dolph Lundgren one All and, right. like, the story of the Thomas Jane one. Right. And in War Zones, like Punisher, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah, get all these. Perfect. I just yeah. didn't like the Jigsaw uh, character. Sorry, about Dave. Uh, in in War Zone, but you know. yeah, I didn't like the whole like par extreme parkour goofy shit. That he was they were doing, doing like fucking Tommy Lee Jones and yeah. Batman. Yeah, forever, the fucking the, the rocket scene was pretty funny though when the dude's doing the flip <laughs> and the fucking rocket nails him. Speaking of Batman, speaking forever. of dead people, oh, Joel Batman Schumacher. forever. Joel, Joel Schumacher, Joel Schumacher passed Schumacher. away. That's right, because you made fun of him. Oh yeah, you did. <laughs> Well, and we did it. We, we touched on him before, so we really don't have to do this again. But you know, so that was one of the ones. Cab. Yeah, that was the one where, where people were opera. like, "Oh my God, Joel Schumacher!" And I'm his biggest fan. I was like, "Are you though?" Oh <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> this was in a further a, a, an earlier episode that we did. Well, when you go further back in his career, he definitely had some hits in the '80s, uh, early not very early '90s. Flatliners. Before you go, yeah, yeah. Keep Apparently, the he, one. he wrote the Wiz. I did not know that. Yes, he did. He wrote the Wiz. What's the Wiz? The Wiz is the is the black version of the Wizard of Oz. Oh, I, Michael Jackson. Oh man, I thought Diana it was the Ross. one the little kid plays Nintendo. <laughs> that's the not wizard. the Wiz. That's oh, the, that's the oh, Wizard. God. I was about to say that's cool. I like that movie. That's also Christian Slater. Uh, but yeah, I mean Max Max Vincito. I mean he's Ming the Merciless. He's 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 Father Marin. Uh, so many fucking great. He's actually the voice of. Um, Joel Schumacher's the voice. Uh, of no, Vigo, uh, Vigo in Ghostbusters Two. Max Vincito. Max oh, Vincito. Oh, we jump back again. Yeah, yeah man, we're, we're all over the place. You guys are trying to derail my train. Nah, I wasn't derailing. Man. You went um, on. A, you went on like a five minute rant about Judge Dredd. Who's I know. Derailing you? <laughs> yeah, that was really weird. <laughs> Stallone <laughs> Dredd. You were like, I got to defend Stallone. I think right. we no, 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 I don't defend that piece of shit. There was like two minutes about his helmet. We had like two minutes about a helmet on Stallone. What day is it? And then he, uh, Max Vincito does also a needful things. Uh, I like, you know, it's, it's, that, that's a bad thing. Conan, yeah. I mean, fucking, he's done so many things off the top of my head I can think of that I'm like, 
whatever movie he's in, he's like he's like Donald Pleasance. <laughs> he makes it better. Halloween Five is awful, but Donald Pleasance is good. He's one of those people that just sort of like shows up in movies too. Like yeah, little, yeah. like he was in uh, the Force Awakens just for a few minutes. And you're like, oh shit! <laughs> yeah, he's the beginning. Yeah, yeah. He's like the Luis Guzman of people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or like another person that died, Fred Willard. Fucking Fred Willard and everything. And, you know, I don't... I, Salem's I, I, Lot, I, Salem's Lot was the only, like, horror film. I was like, oh, well, he's in Salem's Fred Lot. Fred Willard. Didn't he host a dating game or some shit? Is that that guy? I, I, I was I loved him. Him. I hadn't seen him in years, and he popped up on Roseanne as a gay man. I was like, that's fucking great. Yeah, I'm probably thinking of someone else. Is <laughs> so, he the guy from uh, that was in, like, uh, the dog thing? The Best in Show? Yeah, Chris, all the Christopher Guest movies. Yeah, I, he loves yeah. Christopher Guest films. I, mean, those I love those movies. movies. Those yeah. are really good. <clears throat> he's amazing in everything, and I, I, I want to bet with somebody once because... I said, you know, fucking Fred Willard is in everything. He just shows up places. And then when the movie Wally came out, he's the only fucking real human in it. <laughs> he's just in it. He's just there. Does he play any? I think in the like the straight to DVD American Pie movies, he plays like the yeah, dad in those. He right? Probably is. I just he's probably a dad. He's, yeah, he's, he's he probably, probably is. There. I mean, he he was probably in that. I mean, he's. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just shooting from the hip here. I'm sure he was in Idle Hands. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely in Idle Hands. Yeah, I don't. I'm just agreeing. I just watched Idle Hands. I don't remember Fred. Oh yeah, he's the dad in it. No, he's the, always the dad. Or well, the, the, parents di- the parents die instantly, but maybe he was. Maybe he did get killed at the beginning. Because that's the whole thing. His hand kills his whole family, and then he cuts that's it off. That's why it's idle. He just can't. That was another stoner movie. That was like a, another one you'd watch of Half Baked and Friday back then. Was Idle Hands? Idle Hands. Yeah. And then be like, kill that motherfucker from Offspring. Do well, it. I'm glad it's getting be rediscovered because it got put it back on Blu-ray, and people are like, oh, this movie's awesome. Idle Hands is. Yeah. 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 I remember that uh, the girl with the kiss makeup having really good boobs when I was young. <laughs> Can confirm. And then, uh, and then they killed, uh, they, yeah, Chester from Offspring gets killed on stage, which I thought was pretty cool. After covering the Ramones, so he fucking deserved it. Um, let's see, <laughs> Dieter Laser passed away. Dieter Laser, the, the creepy German from uh, That's a cool Human name. Centipede. Yeah, from Human Centipede. Oh, he's dead? Yeah, yeah, man. Like the dude, the villain in part two? Yeah. yeah. Oh, in the original. In the original Human Centipede, he is the doctor. Oh, he puts them all together. He puts the puzzle. I thought it's the Lawrence together. Harvey. No, that's Dieter Laser. Yeah, he was he was in the first one and the third. Oh, one. Lawrence Harvey's the second one. Yeah, Lawrence Harvey's awesome though. He's yeah. such a slime ball in that movie. And he's such a good person actually. At least when I met him. What the fuck? I have those mixed up. That's so weird to me. I could have swore Lawrence Harvey was the first one. But no, yeah, was Dieter Laser. Dieter Laser is basically yeah. doing his version of a Klaus Kinski character in that movie. Yeah. Uh, which I appreciate because I was a big Klaus Kinski fan. Like, if you like Werner Herzog films, Klaus Kinski's like, you know, Akira, you know, Nosferatu, all that. Yeah. He's basically doing Klaus Kinski on film. He's like a light, a Klaus Kinski light, because I don't think he's ever tried to murder anybody. No, he hasn't. That dude's insane. Yeah. I remember insane. liking those first two movies and then hating the, th- the third one's the prison one, right? I did not watch that one. Yeah, that's, that's pretty bad because I think they like team up. I think it's like him and Lawrence Harvey in like one movie, right? I think they're both there. Well, now he, he plays watch. a different character. In- he plays a different. Well, yeah, character. he died. Yeah, I thought he he dies at the end of the first one, doesn't he? Jesus. Yeah, he plays. Bilbo. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's like it's like Perry. He, play, he plays Bilbo. It's like yeah, a, he plays Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> it's like Perry <laughs> Shen. <laughs> Perry Shen's in every Hatchet movie, and he dies in three of them. So sometimes you just come back. Uh, Ennio Morricone. Man, you're really good with names, man. I would fuck all these names up. The, uh, Ennio Morricone is uh, one of my favorite composers. Uh, I didn't even know. Oh, composer! I didn't okay, even know who he was. I didn't know you, you know one of you know his songs. You, you know absolutely. His, oh my God, Fulci! He's worked with Bob. He's worked with John Carpenter. He's worked with Tarantino. When Tarantino pretty much remade the thing with the Hateful, Hateful Eight, that opening uh, title is his is Ennio really? Morricone. Yeah. He he wrote that for the thing, and it wasn't used in that movie. So it's actually in the uh, like if you put the Blu-ray in, it's the music playing during the during the title sequence. They put that song as the main theme of The Hateful Eight. Oh, I have that vinyl. Yeah. I just had this thing where I buy, like, scores, but I never care about names, yeah. so I just put the record on, like, oh, I like this. But I Mark never Cone, look at anything. He's worked with Sony. That's people. awesome. He, yeah. he did the original Django fucking soundtrack. He did all the original Dollar Trilogy. The uh, original Django? You're talking about, like, way back when. Kabuchis. Okay, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah um, he's got his own Spotify channel. He's fucking, yeah. He, he it's amazing, and his, his music will live on. Any Marconi guy. So it's trapped. Yeah, he did all the original, <laughs> the first few uh, Argento films. He scored all of those. Did the Untouchables. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Untouchables. He's a goddamn amazing human being. He's around. Just, yeah. He's going through it all, man. So how did he die? I don't know, actually. You know, I, I guess I'm, I, this is what's weird about like me. I don't like to know way. how people pass away. Really? I don't I like death. Know. It's t- something you're going to learn about me really fast. It's, it's fucked up shit that I love. I don't like real death. I don't like real violence. And I don't, I don't like know. it either. I like to read about it, though. I'm weird. I, I'll, I'll watch a thousand documentaries on serial killers, 
but I don't want to know Dude, how people I really? care. Like, yeah. How oh, people, I'm a fucking like, psycho. Like, if somebody posts, like, somebody's dead on Facebook, I, if I don't know the person, yeah. I will fucking click on their thing and just scroll through trying to figure out how they fucking died. Weird. Or, well, how did he die, then? Or I'll look into, like, <laughs> I'll, like, or I'll get that curiosity. Of, like, I wonder what their last post was. I don't even know the person. I just want to see, like, if their last post was public just to see what, like, the last... See if it was something like, 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 I'm going to go out and fucking yeah. four-wheel well, off well, a cliff or, or something like that. Or if it's, like... Some shit I'm into, like I was like, oh, that's fun. so weird. It's like I don't know. I guess you look for ways to fucking relate. It's just really weird. I mean, I don't see where he died, but uh, one of the things that sort of oh, so he's me. not dead. Oh, yeah, well, the the the, away, the, uh, the, uh, the the westerns with Clint Eastwood, fistful. Of yeah, dollars, he did all the like, dollars trilogy. Like, yeah, like he even the, did like the ones after that. Cause the song, the the song from him with the wah, 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 like that song. Do you think dudes like that have their own music played at their funeral? Oh man! Oh my God, Derek! <laughs> I love you. <laughs> or Betty, you think he made he composed something especially for his but Yeah, maybe he had it. Like he's just like as he's going, he's hands this. Yeah, he's like Amadeus he's writing the yeah. death mass. You know, I, yeah. that, that, I don't know. Hopefully, be kind of cool. Play it, motherfuckers! Right as I go on the ground, hit play. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's like Danny Hicks. We touched on Danny Hicks in another yeah. episode, and he's actually close uh, close to us. Yeah, a lot of, for me, you know, mainly through mutual friends and shit, like uh, the Wrecking Crew boys and Tim and Harley, all those guys, like they, they're all really close to him. I know him in passing, but it, that was a weird one that hit close to home with the convention scene. Because if you go to these horror conventions, that dude was at every single one for about yeah. probably six years straight. Him and John Dugan were pretty neck and neck on like, you're going to fucking see him if you go to a convention. Yeah, man. Well, they were, they were buds. Yeah, and they were, they were both very cool, very fran, <laughs> fran friendly, fan friendly dudes. It, it was unfortunate, man. That was out of nowhere too, because I didn't, I hadn't really heard much yeah, he about his health for or anything. Four years, but he didn't yeah. tell, let people know. It, yeah, I went. I know how he died, Derek. They kind of yeah. <laughs> See, there you go. Well, I wouldn't ask that one. That's a little close to home, so it's not as like can't be humorous. Um, I, can't, I don't even know how I know that. Probably because uh, I'm such good friends with John. Well, there was a go. I remember there was like a GoFundMe or some sort of thing for him when he was in the hospital. Yeah. yeah. And then out of nowhere, it's like, oh, Danny Hicks has passed well, away. I mean, it, At least it, out of nowhere for me. It was pretty quick. He was diagnosed on June 5th, and then he died June 30th. Like, so it was pretty quick. You guess oh, fucking, he, that, that's on fucking Wikipedia. Sean like like Connery years, uses it? I guess I'm completely wrong on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so, it, well, Hicks announced it on January. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, maybe it was. I knew yeah. he was battling it. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, Intruder, uh, 2001 Maniacs, Evil Dead 2, Evil Wars, Dead 2 is Maniac like the, Cop. My name is Bruce. Oh, that's a great one. All the Bruce Campbell. Like films that people love, he pretty much. Dark Man, he was in that too. Yeah, he is. He's the one who has the 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 lake that has the machine gun in it. Dark Man threw me off. We just watched Evil Dead two, actually like a couple weeks ago, and I always forget how big of a role he has in that. But he's got a lot of on screen time there. Good old reliable Jake. (laughs) Yeah, he's like the second most on screen outside of little old Ash. Let's dig into John Saxon, man. Ah, that was a rough one, too. I mean, he was up there in age. I mean, he's been around forever. This one was your fault. He's uh, Yeah, this is another one that I mentioned. Well, John Saxon, <laughs> when we uh, started this podcast, if you go back and watch our old episodes, uh, John Saxon sits right beside me for a bit, and I point him out. And I would, uh, right before he died, I grabbed him and was like, I want this figure. And then he fucking died like <laughs> right after it. And I was like, son of a bitch. That figure's going to be so expensive now. No, but I was also <laughs> sad about him passing. Uh, it Derek and Derek uh, fucking knew it. Knew yeah, it. and for me, I know, I, I know fans love him from Night Round Elm Street and Dream Warriors. I mean, that's really the people listening to this podcast probably would jump to that pretty yeah. quickly. For me, it was growing up. It was Enter the Dragon. Enter the Dragon. Dragon. Enter the Dragon. Enter Dragon. Enter Dragon. I mean, I'm a martial arts fucking dork, dude. And Enter the Dragon and Bloodsport were always neck and neck for me. It's like my two movies that I watched over and over and over. I fucking loved John Saxon because of that. Yeah, I do and too. Then, uh, I love his his flair in that film. He and he was always open to no. He he knew martial arts somewhat apparently. Yeah, yeah. And then, but him and him him and Bruce Lee just connected. Bam. If you uh, so I have what are those fucking things called? Those our buddy uh, uh, Joe Rogers at Twelve Gauge Gore. He gets those like press Bobby kits. Cards. Press kit. Yeah, he gets those cards. press kits, and I have the Enter the Dragon press kit from him, and it goes over like all these martial arts studios and what type of martial arts each guy in the movie trains in and the only three of them listed were Bruce Lee, John Saxon, and Jim Kelly and they interviewed both all of them about like what martial arts they're into and shit like that where they train at 
It has a list of all these like YMCA's and shit you can go to in the seventies <laughs> to go train and probably because yeah, they didn't have dojos in America. Yeah, they didn't have any. Nobody really opened dojos yet until like that karate boom in the eighties, thanks to old Mr. Miyagi. Last Dragon, uh, goddammit. <laughs> no, yeah. no, not at all. Last Dragon, <laughs> fuck. So no, I know we too. Um, yeah, but John Saxon was great. He was really cool at conventions. Uh, the one time I met him to get an autograph, I was telling you guys about it earlier. Uh, I walked up to him. It was, it was a lonely show for a lot of celebs because everyone wanted to meet the Kiss guys. So I ended up talking to him about Enter the Dragon for like 10 minutes or so. And it was funny because you could tell he was so relieved to not talk about Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Because that's what, and it's great if you love it. I fucking love it too. But sometimes when you're behind a table, it's nice to hear about something else you've done and somebody actually call you by your fucking real name instead of your character name. Oh, yeah. Uh, that we had this 10 minute conversation and then it's finally like yeah what do, well, what do you got for me and then I roll out my Dream Warriors poster yeah. and you're not just, talking about it but here it is yeah you could see like the son of a bitch look in his face but it was pretty cool just disappointment yeah. when, I, when I met him yeah. the only thing I wanted to get signed was a Black Christmas still and he had one little black and white one and it's just him answering a phone I'm like I'll take it I don't care I love him for he did a movie called uh, Queen of Blood it's one of his first horror films he worked with uh, uh uh, Bava, he's worked with uh, um, fucking. He's in Tenebrae with Argento. Yeah, that's a weird one for me. How did he end up in Tenebrae? Because he was doing a, a lot of Italian films. He did with Zombie Holocaust. He's done. You know, he did Battle of Beyond the Stars, which is not an Italian film, but like you know, he, he, these this. Vein so do they do they dub him in those, or does he just? Cause I don't know. Everybody. I wouldn't seems... be surprised if he knew Italian or you know. Yeah. I don't know how they knew Italian. Dude, yeah. you know, he knows Italian. He knew dude. Italian. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Can't speak Spanish. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to go back and watch that again. I never really try to follow if it sounds like his voice or not. But. That's your homework assignment. I, I'm looking on here. I'm doing homework. Battle of Beyond the Stars was one of my big movies as a kid. Because, you know, Sybil Danning, you know, hello. Uh, George Prepard, if he's a fucking, he's in the A-team. And, and actually, John Saxon was in an A-team is, episode. What else is Sybil Danning in? Howling 2. That Hercules. piece of shit. Those uh, Howling movies. I just uh, wanted to say the Howling movies are yeah. a piece of shit. Rob Zombie brought her back for part two, I think, of the Halloween series. I mean, uh, you know, goddamn, Sybil Danning's amazing. Yeah, if she didn't do those Howling movies, she had a great career. Shut up, man. Uh, he worked with Bava and the Evil Eye. Uh, what else? I got some things actually written down here somewhere. You try to get that shit in. It just says, and was a dragon. <laughs> he was in with uh, Dara Nicolotti. We, we need to talk about her. Who? She basically, what well, she helped Argento make some of his best films. It was okay. his partner. It's Aja's yeah. mother. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. They were actually, uh, John Saxon and her were actually in Tenebrae together. Uh, Dara and Nicolati, even if we don't have a lot of time, because I know we're going to wrap this episode up yeah. here soon, but we uh, to have that kind of influence on your partner to where you make good films and when she's not there, you can notice it. I noticed it. You know, I didn't know who the hell she was, but when yeah. you go back and you're like, wow, the quality of those films are not just are not there anymore. It's like John Carpenter losing like his cinematographer. It's like, fuck, man, something's wrong. Well, Argento's last... Uh couple years have not Dracula 3D is amazing okay <laughs> no it's all, it's fucking so what? bad no just, please impale me on my own goddamn stuff. yeah dude fuck but that I need to at least bad. touch on her and a few other people before we get out of this episode um, we already talked about like Mary Higgins Clark she's the fucking she's the woman Stephen King if you want to be that black and white about it she changed she's written volumes and volumes and volumes of murder mysteries and horror books and it's just awesome so I, mean, I need at least uh, talk about her or at least mention her name we have a huge list on this board that we couldn't even get to we haven't even gotten to David Prowess oh shit yeah that's David, where you, you want to talk about that yeah. for a second I mean David. Clockwork Orange is where I'm at but I know you're a Star Wars I mean, guy well David Prowess I mean a lot of people will think of, of Star Wars he was the guy in the suit that got fucked he played he, he's, he's Frankenstein's uh, creature in, in uh, like three Hammer films yeah, yeah. I mean, but go ahead. <laughs> but uh, you know, he wasn't the only Star Wars actor. I mean, there were there were Jeremy Bullock. There's Jeremy Bullock, which is which sucks for him because now with the Mandalorian, I feel like he probably would have had a he, moment. He would have had he would have had his moment, and you well, know, he's a, Boba Fett is a big thing again. Everybody, you know, and he's almost in the same shape as Boba Fett is in this show. <laughs> God, <so. damn. laughs> I don't know, man. He looked like he was better shape. He got uh, Sarlacc. <laughs> but you know, if conventions were a thing, you know, you could put those two guys and the tables next to each other and. I guarantee his table will be busier than the new guy. Oh, I would think so. Yeah, well, he, wasn't hope getting, so. he wasn't getting a lot of love there at the last few conventions. Because no. I remember the one I went to that was him and then uh, Billy D. And Jaron Bob was just sitting there. That's such a him. weirdo. But he was a nice guy, too. He yeah. was one of those like, well, really like, kind of soft spoken, nice old dudes. David Prowse is the same way. He, he, David he, Prowse is cool. He got a lot of uh, a lot of flack from Lucas because, I mean, he never thought that he got the, the his his due. And I agree. Well, he didn't. 
I know. I, 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 that's what I meant. Like, I totally agree. He should have got his due, but I mean... Wasn't he like a power lifter or something? Yes, he was, he was a bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah a bodybuilder. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Weight lifter. Weight lifter. I was more into strength than actual bodybuilding, but yeah. I remember Googling him years ago, and he was just like old pictures of him fucking flexing and shit. Well, he's huge. And it's weird, because I'm like, I picture him as Darth Vader, like the dying. <laughs> <laughs> just like half his head. Yeah. Well, there was the like, story with uh, like Stanley Kubrick making him carry the guy uh, the uh, the guy in the wheelchair from, um, oh my God, he's in like Mask of the Red Death, but he's in Clockwork Orange, and the wheelchair down three flights of stairs and puts him down, and he has, then he has to sit next to him and have to act. Oh, shit. And he's like, that's cool, but they don't call you one-shot Stanley. <laughs> We're going to have to do this a couple times. You know, it's like a 140-pound guy with a 30-pound thing, and I'm like, oh my God. I love these little stories. Yeah, he can do it. Strong enough, I saw him flex. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm one and done. Do we want to touch on anybody else before we get out of here? I mean, there's, 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 there's so many. There's so all many. Kinds there's of so many. That's what's sad. There's so, so many that have passed away this we, year. We just tried and their to, pets. Yeah, we just tried to try to touch on people that are going to be. Most of them are going to be just passed over when it comes down yeah. for Oscars, and they're like in memoriam. But fuck you. Like yeah. you won't see Danny Hicks on there. You you'll see like Sean Connery. That's a yeah. given. You probably won't. You might not even see Stuart Gordon. Yeah, and it's not the it's not the downplay like other celeb deaths because there's been some major ones, but the thing is everyone's gonna talk about Chadwick and Alex Trebek, all those guys. Right. Like those are fucking tragedies. Yeah. It's fuck, especially Chadwick. It fucking sucks. But nobody's gonna talk about it. yeah Stuart Gordon, Stan Kirch. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody, nobody. Uh, even Prowse isn't getting a lot of attention. Yeah. It's kind of just like, oh, Darth Vader died. I'm just looking at my sucks. notes, and the yeah. list is huge. We can't get to all these people, it's, and it sucks. It was hard to do research for this one, because I was just Malcolm like, Dixon. shit, that was this year? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this has been, like, the <laughs> longest year ever anyway. So, but so. before we go, I want to know, mm -mm. who do you think's going to die this year? God damn it, Dave. Who is your guess? I'll go first. Well, did we even talk about Kurt? Or uh, 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 Gary? Uh, oh, Gary, Gary Clark. Gary Clark. Yeah, yeah, yeah Clark. he closed he, the year he, out. He closed God the year damn, out. It sucks. That's like there's so many people, and that was just that's like new. That hit December 31st. Son he, of a bitch. He like clocked right in. I mean, from Day of the Dead guys. If you yeah. don't know who we're talking about. Yeah, he, he's another Bang, one. Bang, you're dead. Yeah, and he, nobody's gonna mention him like at the Oscars or whatever. Fuck I mean, no. he's one I wouldn't even fucking know about unless Facebook existed. Like, yeah. if I didn't have Facebook, I would have never even heard about that. He shit. was also in Big. <laughs> and hackers. Was he like the piano? What was he in? Big? <clears throat> it's the ticket taker. The ticket taker. Okay, I knew it had to be something that was like obscure and goofy. But. I met him. I met him at a convention years. years are you years like that? Were you, are you an autograph hound? Like you gotta get the whole cast on well, something. I got his autograph. This is like this is like when I started going to conventions yeah. and like collecting well, he autographs. Was in like the newspaper that was in Day of the Day. <clears throat> yeah, and you know, that. yeah, awesome. And so I, I would just I was I was trying to get everybody. I think it was like twenty bucks or like fifteen bucks then. It wasn't even that much. So I got it, and then he signed it, like, fucking A, biggest piece of meat in the cave. Yeah! <laughs> and it's just, like, one that I don't It's in the bathroom, in right? Room. It's in the fucking bathroom. Yeah. You guys have to, like, buy the toilet. That's, that's a good place to <laughs> that's put it. That's where it should be. <laughs> probably. Put Gary Clark in the toilet. Let's close out this year. But who do you think's going to die this year, Steve? Fucking, hopefully, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's, a, he's immortal. He bathes in virgin blood. I, I am not good at this. This, this is a Derek realm. This, this is, is Derek. a Derek realm? Yeah, because like, he just says it and it happens. I always think Clint Eastwood's going to die every goddamn year. And, you know, he's not a horror movie guy. But I'm just like, when's it going to happen? Hurry the fuck up. So that's your pick? No. I'm not picking anybody. You're not going to pick I'm not jinxing my sweat. heroes. Well, I mean, I'm not going to uh, Dick anybody. Warlock is not looking good. <clears throat> a lot of people I can... I can. I I would, mean, John Carpenter looks awful. I would definitely put Dick Warlock pretty high on that list. Yeah, the, the damage that guy's done uh, to his body is just like... I can't Rick, Rick Flair. I yeah. feel like Ric Flair is about done. Sorry, guys. Ric Flair is yeah. probably going to woo his way out of here soon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I think, I, I think I don't even know if this counts, but Ozzy Osbourne. I think he's. I think. I think, this think is he's due. I think this is the year because he's been locked up with Sharon all year. Oh my god! He's wanting a way out. So it's I, him and Viagra and Cher. I wonder who has the and, record for like most years they're predicted to die, but they keep surviving. It's probably Ozzy. Ozzy. It's, it's Ozzy or like, Motley Crue. <laughs> Ozzy, Ozzy, Motley Crue, and Keith Richards. Oh yeah, Keith Richards is still alive. I have a list of a lot of people I do not want to see pass away, so I don't I don't know, I'm not jinxing anybody. He's got the reverse death note. Yeah. I wanna yeah. know if Ric Flair and Dick Warlock is good. Well get us out of here, Dave. You can remember our list. It's so rusty and it's all Oh, and just fingers crossed, Corey Feldman. 
Fingers crossed, Corey. <laughs> All right. And that's a good note. Uh, where's the where's the, the list? Did, fell. I don't know. It, oh, this Jesus is the rustiest episode. Sorry, first episode back of the season. All right. Where are you well, supposed to find us on? Thanks for listening. Uh, find us on uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Spotify Google. Uh, Google, uh, <laughs> Breaker, Podcast Addict. There's so many that we uh, that you can find us on. You obviously have because now we're in 15 countries. And what the fuck is wrong with you all? We love you all. Now we're getting around. Yeah. yeah. Well, pretty good for the first episode of the second season. Yeah. yeah pretty sad, but sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking 2020 sucked. 2021, the sequel. Thanks, guys. We're out of here. Oh, the sequel. Bye. Bye. <laughs>